Hi, I'm Larry. Welcome to my studio. Today's lesson is going to be an acrylic lesson. So if you want to follow along, you can go to the blog spot and you'll find links to my page where I keep all the the reference material for this uh, for these videos and what we're going to be doing today this is uh, some pots that I found at one of the locations where I usually go up and go uh, plein air painting and we're going to do that. You might look around your own yard and find interesting things to paint since we're not supposed to be out and about too much right now. You'll also find a simple drawing up there. Uh, so, you know, if, if you want to follow along, that's, that's where you're going to find this. Um, I'm working on, this is a canvas board that I have painted out. It had something else, probably another lesson that I did or, or something. And I've just painted it out with gesso and some uh, probably ultramarine blue and either burnt sienna or burnt umber. That kind of looks like burnt umber. And I, I, it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, a lot of artists, including myself, like to work on a toned canvas. So that's just a canvas board that you find at the art store. Uh, when you get a canvas board or a canvas from the art store, you don't need to do anything else to it. It already comes pre-gessoed. Um, if you look at it and it's kind of a tan color or cream color, then that then you would need to gesso it because that that cream color is the color of the the canvas before it has gesso. Just just so that you know that you know the difference between that. So when we get started here. I'm not going to have any real drawing on here to begin with. I need to do the background first before I start working on the pots. So let me get started by changing the set, set up here so that you can watch and see how I do this. Thank you for watching. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the the background as I said before, but I'm not going to do it exactly the same way as I see it in the in the photograph and that is your prerogative when you are an artist. You get to you get to change things. Um, this is my <clears throat> number 10 uh, flat bristle brush. I'll be using this and I just sprayed water on on my canvas and I'm just going to be picking up and doing what's called brush mixing. That's just some burnt sienna. Pick up some blue. Maybe a little burnt umber. And I'm just going to come in here and just... This is kind of crisscross strokes. I'll be just adding color as I go. You want to be careful not to get it too wet because if you can see there it's kind of a little bit thin because I've got wet on my brush, wet on the canvas and I just spritz the uh, paints. Pick up a little bit of green. I, I want this to look like an out of focus background. So I'm picking up a little bit of of green back here and just you know I should hold my brush back a little bit so that I can stay out of the frame here and this is a good practice too to get into is is to hold your brush back um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and orange on the same brush and just just like maybe there's some sunlight coming in the back back here this is why I tell my students, put out all your paints because you don't know what you're going to need. Pick up some more burnt sienna, a little more blue up here in the corner. Just This is just kind of a muddled or mottled background. My brush is dirty so there's still some of that other color on there. A little more orange, this time a little 
tad red you know that you don't know what is back here you just want to make it look like there's something I don't know a, you know building or maybe there's a tree or a bush and flower or it's fall I just picked up some more green a little more burnt sienna a little burnt umber and just just lightly come in and blend this all together if you want it darker add the blue and the umber try not to spread it out you know don't take one brush load then try to spread it across the whole canvas put out paint I put out you know a big almost a thumb size amount of paint more green more blue you know these could be bushes in the background you know we don't know it's just something back there green little umber and make it darker over here on this side I do have right above me here I have my my photograph so I'm kind of using it as a guide rather than as an absolute and I'm just going to let that guide me. I think I want to pick up a little more yellow and just kind of blend that up in here. Just want to tone that down just a little bit. Clean my brush off here. But look at all the brush strokes that I've got going. Okay, so that's that's that part. Now I want to do the ground. Now the ground is very similar. I'm picking up some burnt sienna and little umber, but this time rather than doing crisscross strokes, I'm going to be doing a series of strokes like, you know, kind of like flat bananas or you know, they're almost flat bananas. Pick up the umber, the blue, and just kind of work it back up in there. This could be dirt, it could be bricks. You know, just make up stories as to what you think it is. This this is the underpainting for all of this. You know, we might do a little bit more, a little more detail to it, but this is this is just underpainting. Burnt sienna, more more ultramarine blue. There was some green on my brush, but I'm just making these these kind of long, flattish strokes. They're not totally flat, flat, but they are. They are like, like you see dirt that's kind of flat, but it's got some, some texture to it. That's all that is. So I'm going to add some more blue and, and sienna or umber. Now I'm going to have to stop here in a minute because I have run out of paint almost. But I'll finish this off and when we come back it'll be dry. Try to get your painting to this part if you're following along. So you can stop the video whenever you need to. Oh, there was some alizarin crimson down there too that's that's okay don't don't worry about it. if you get some I mean I could even throw green in here who knows there could be moss here there could be some spilled paint
You know, don't don't sweat the small stuff. So I'm going to stop the the video here and put out some more blue because I need to make this darker. So give me a minute and I'll be right back and I'll have let this dry. Okay, I'm back and all of this is nice and dry now. I want to kind of work on this background first. In acrylics, we want to try and work from back to front. We can paint right over this, so it's not a big deal. But I want to make this look a little bit more like trees and dense brush, like you've come into some kind of secret garden. Now, in the background on, on the original photograph, there's columns from the building that was behind there and things. I don't want to paint those. They, they, they don't make any sense. Um, you know, it, when you have to explain something, you can probably leave it out. So what I'm going to do here, and if I were painting this on my own, I would probably just freehand this. But if you need to come in and give yourself some ideas, you can take a chalk. This is just white chalk like you'd use on a chalkboard and just come in and, and just, you know, suggest where there might be some branches coming over and want to kind of leave some of that that light spot there. You know, I could, could do a little bit back there if I want. Um, but, you know, to give yourself some guidelines, I'm, I'm going to put a few little little ideas of, of trees or bushes or something, but I, I want to keep most of this background kind of mysterious. So this is my number 10 flat bristle brush. I do a lot of my preliminary uh, work with, with a bristle brush. So this is a number 10, and when you start out, you want to wet the brush first if you're new to acrylics, because what happens is that the bristles themselves are very porous, and like a sponge, they want to soak up water. So if the first water they find is in your paint, uh, it's going to soak up the paint into your bristles, and your brush isn't going to last as long as it could. So r wet your brush first. That's what I'm doing right now. And then dry it off. You want to make sure that it's 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 dry. You know, so damp. Okay, not dry dry, but damp. And then I think I'll do just a little bit of work back in here. I'm going to pick up my hooker's green. I'm going to add just a touch of orange just to, to soften the green, to, to modify or, or gray down a color, you want to add a form of its, its complement. And the complement to green is red. So orange is a mix of yellow and, and red, and so that red just softens the green. The, the red itself could be used like the cadmium red, which is a bit on the orange side, but I find that it does a little bit too good a job. So I'm just going to come in here and just suggest this is back in that light area, and I'm just tapping with the corner of my brush. And my cat just came in. Kind of scumble and, and blend that back in here. This is just going back into the back. And I notice how I'm just kind of skipping around, just, just suggesting, just suggesting something back there. Now I've got this, this orange, so I'm going to add a little bit of, of orange to that same color and some more yellow. And what, what happens is by adding the orange into the green, it works in the opposite direction. The green is now modifying the 
the orange and making it a, a, a softer, grayer color. And, okay, maybe a little more orange, a little more green. Mixing is probably the, the hardest thing that you do. I haven't used any white. Okay, there's, there's some of this. And I'm, I'm just kind of quickly skimming and scumbling and, and adding like there's sunlight coming in in the back. Will I do any more? Maybe. Maybe there's, there's a, a break in the trees back here. Just a little bit of sunlight is coming through. So now I'm going to come forward and these trees I want a bit darker. I'm going to be using my ultramarine blue, some hooker's green this time, and a little touch of alizarin crimson. That alizarin crimson and blue kind of make a purpley color. So now I'm going to, here's where I'm using my contrast. Contrast is the difference between light and dark. And so whenever you can, you can use contrast, uh, use it. I, I, I like more drama in my, my painting than a lot of people do. I like color. I like the, the play of light and dark. Come up in here. I'm not going to go over all of that underpainting that I did. That creates little patches of lighter color, like holes through the trees. And here it's a little bit redder. I hit a patch of, of alizarin I didn't get mixed in. That's okay. Don't worry about, about those little things. If you look at trees or look at any natural thing, you're going to see a lot of variation in color. I just want to get this a little bit, bit darker. I can pick up just a little hint of, of yellow. This, you know, it's a bigger hint of yellow than I wanted, but I'll just keep blending it in. Maybe some sun is coming through there. Can use some of that other color that I had, that orangey color. And, but I, I don't want anything real, real light in that area. I want to keep that part a little bit on the, the mystery side, you know, just kind of a, an interesting color. But this is how you do clouds too, by the way. You know, just coming in and, and blending your colors together. Add some more blue and some more green. Come over here. And just, I'm just scumbling. That means I'm, my brush is going in all different directions. Gonna add just a, a hint of yellow and orange to that just to make a little bit deeper shade maybe there's some back down here there's some bushes that are just just outside the sunlit part rinse my brush a little bit come pick up some more blue green little touch of a lizard and crimson come in here throw in some dark just 
you don't have to spell out everything for your viewer, whoever is looking at this. You just need to, to suggest to them what's going on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break, I'm going to finish this off, and when I come back, I will have just done more of what I'm doing right now, but I'll finish it, and you don't have to sit here and watch me paint. Everything that I've done here is what I'm going to do to fill that up. And then we'll get started on the ground. So hold on and, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've reset the camera so I can focus a little bit better down here on the, the ground part. Now what I'm going to be doing, because this is still pretty dark, uh, this is just a, a, another board that I've painted out and I use this uh, to do demos on or to test paint. What I'm going to be doing, again this is my number 10 uh, flat bristle brush and I'll be using the corner but I, I do tend to roll the, the brush in my hand. so. Just be aware of that. I'm, I'm not, I don't have a death grip on it. You, the brush is almost like a baton. You, you spin it around, you use different portions of the, the brush. But what I'm going to be doing is long, kind of flat U shapes. And it, it is going to be kind of a dry brush. All of these little holes that you see will be part of that underpainting and that will give texture. It'll create like like a a ground, you know, that's got all the, the different bumps and, and shadows and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It may be a little bit hard to see. I'm going to start out in the back here with my burnt sienna and to that I'm going to add a little touch of orange okay so let me bring bring my board back up here so you can kind of see the color so this is burnt sienna with a little touch of orange yeah, that's about the color that I want so it's kind of like a pumpkin color now I don't have any formulas for any of this I'm more of a visual person. So here I'm just coming in all the way into the back, back here, just creating this idea of a path coming through. You know, it could be dirt, could be bricks. You know, I, I, you know, whatever makeup stories, I'll tell you to make up stories all the time. Just reloading, burnt sienna, little orange. Now acrylics dry a little bit darker. So this looks kind of bright as I put it down, but you can see how it's already starting to dry and become a little bit darker. And that frustrates some new students because especially if they've come from oil where oil kind of stays the same. But um, it's just something you have to be aware of. Part of this I'll leave as is and then others I'll come back in and I'll highlight. Going to reload. This is a, again my burnt sienna and orange, but I'm going to add just a touch more orange and this time a little bit of, of yellow. That yellow will lighten it just a bit. Work it into your brush and I'm kind of wiping off the, the outside so I don't have a lot of, of paint on my brush. I want, I want it to be kind of a dry brush technique. Come in. Now, 
if you look at the photograph, th th there was a lot of sun in here. Well, I'm modifying it. This is my painting, and so I'm I'm modifying this. This was asphalt with with pine needles all over it. But I'm going to make it dirt, so I don't have to put a lot of pine needles in if I don't want to. As the artist, you get to, to make your own decisions. You know, if, if you want to do it as asphalt and pine needles, that's, that's perfectly okay. A little more burnt sienna, a little more orange, a little more yellow. Work it into my brush. I'm giving you a play-by-play play here, and just wipe off any excess. And then painting from the side is is not fun. And I'm painting from the opposite side that I usually paint from too. So okay, that got a little bit thick, but that's okay. Some of this will be covered up by the the pots. Like over in here, I'm not too worried about it because that will be covered up by pots. Pick up some more color. This time I'm going to go kind of reverse because as I come down into the foreground I want to add some shadows. So I'm picking up some more burnt sienna but to that same mix I'm, I'm adding a little bit of blue. So now it's going to start getting darker again. I want to focus my viewer to the center of my painting where all the action is. Down here in the corners that's you know that's really not all that exciting. A little more blue. See how it's getting darker. Now, let me move this up. I'll have to hold it. Come in. There'll be shadows underneath the underneath those pots. I'm adding just a little bit of of alizarin crimson and to the blue create some shadows. Now since this is a you know supposed to be a garden with you know a lot of shade and this is just a, a sunny spot in the garden you know you're gonna find shadows like that. Okay, I'm just going to finish off here off camera, let this dry, and I'll start the next segment right here where I've, I've left off. So I want you to, to, to stay calm, stay safe, call your friends, call your family, and most of all, keep painting, and I'll see you again right here in my studio and hopefully someday we'll meet again in class. Thank you for watching.